Hi, and welcome to this SurfRay sponsored webinar on custom ranking models in SharePoint 2010 search. My name is Robert Pinnock, and I'll be presenting today. I am co author of Pro SharePoint 2010 Search, a new book by A Press, and I'm also a technical lead here at SurfRay, the makers of the Ontolica product line, Search, and uh, other enhancements for SharePoint 2010. Please do check out our website, surfray.com, download a trial go and check out our other webinars. There's some great stuff up, the, up there by me and my co-authors. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, today is part one of a two-part webinar on making custom, custom ranking models in SharePoint, which is really kind of an exciting thing that you can do with SharePoint. First question is, of course, why would you want to make a custom ranking algorithm? Isn't the one in SharePoint good enough? Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, then we'll look at the built-in ranking algorithms what there is there because there's more than just one built in to the standard SharePoint and we'll look at what's available and how to activate them the ones that are already there and then uh, we'll look at those how to look at those models and test them and activate them in the web part uh, we're not going to go into actually creating a custom ranking model today although we're going to get the foundation for that that will be in part two where we actually go into the Excel XML schema and uh, and um, create uh, our own or modify the ranking algorithm so that we can do things like boost metadata. Um, however, this is the foundation, so please do bo watch both if you have time to. Okay, so why would we want to uh, to change the custom uh, or to change the ranking algorithm? The default ranking algorithm is really good, especially for SharePoint content. You're going to get really good results in with the default uh, ranking algorithm. But people's search motives may vary. Uh, people have different scenarios. One department may be looking for a term that brings that has different content than another department, say research and development, might be looking for a product name with the hope to get the technical specs on that product. Whereas the marketing department wants to get PowerPoint documents about or marketing logos or something like that. So these different scenarios um, may need a different approach, different ranking approach. And you can actually build different search centers that have um, different ranking algorithms for different sites or different groups. Um, People search also has uh, different drivers. People who are using people search want to find uh, expertise. They want to find their colleagues. So having uh, the, all the content ranked by the hits of the words you're searching for may not be the the right kind of uh, ranking. Also, sometimes the content that we have is not structured in such a way that it fits well with our default ranking algorithm. So we might want to be able to tweak it a little bit, add our own uh, metadata ranking or, or weighting to, uh, to get back better content. This maybe is the case for database content or content that has poor metadata. We'd want to get something back. A good example, I say for example, um, a t particular document type appears much higher. We want to add rank ranking to other document types. However, I would like to say that the default ranking algorithm has been designed to be the best compromise for all of the different values that we can modify the ranking for. And the custom ranking that we can do does not touch all of the different uh, elements that we can rank from. There's a lot of them that would not work well with being modified. So there are only certain things that we can modify the custom ranking algorithm with. If you want more control, you should probably look at another product like Fast. So, um, but please uh, do watch and see what's available here. Now, built-in models. This is uh, probably a surprise to some people, but there are several built-in models that you can actually try out and see if they work better for you into um, SharePoint already. Here are, the, here are what they are. They're the expertise social distance model, which is, of course, a, a people search kind of ranking algorithm. And it is so you can see how close the documents were by their creator to you. So um, high proximity. This is about the content, the proximity of the content on the site uh, or on the page, how close the terms are together. Another expertise content, uh, giving ranking to uh, people who are uh, experts in that area. Name social distance, so we're ranking now on uh, names in the content, con uh, authors of the content. Uh, there's a 
the main people model, which the people search uh, uses. And then there's the no proximity model, where the, the terms are not considered for how close they are together, just on the, the frequency of the matches and the other values, of course, that ranking considers. If you want to know more about the details of the ranking algorithm, please do pick up our book. Of course, also custom models can be made. Now, how do we do it? I'll show you this in a live demo in just a second, but I'll just go through. Um, we really need to use PowerShell to, to see those models. Um, you can, of course, call this from the object model. I don't go into that. Uh, there's probably some information on how to do that out there. Actually, this blog post that I've posted in the bottom of the references does uh, talk a little bit about how to do that. Um, we can also, after we've seen the ranking algorithm, we can test them out, see what the difference does. And I'll show you how to do that here today. So, and to do that, we really just need the ID and use this cool RM, which of course stands for ranking model parameter in the URL to test it. If we want a more permanent uh, use of this, we can actually modify the web part, which I'll also show you to always use that particular ranking model. Okay. So uh, let's just jump over to a live uh, demo. And what I would like to show you is to how to, um, to see these custom models and take their IDs from these custom models. Now, in part two, when we go through, we'll show you how to create a custom model and uh, upload it. But right now, we're just going to look in the built-in models. So you got to use PowerShell to do that, which is the SharePoint shell. and uh, you find that under your SharePoint 2010 products default install, um, there's the shell can be opened here. Now, once you get into the shell, you have to do a couple of things. One is you have to get the service application uh, ID, and um, then you have to pass that to uh, a commandlet called Git SP Enterprise Search Ranking Model. Now, commandlets are the the new commands that S, uh, that PowerShell takes, and there's a list of them. Uh, if I can just jump back to my PowerPoint for a sec, for example, there's a list of all the commandlets that are available in PowerShell for SharePoint here. And uh, if you've got SharePoint installed, you'll have those commandlets available to you. And uh, there are a number of them. There are many that you can do and modify things in the in SharePoint very easily, from provisioning search to checking ranking models and all sorts of other things as well, activating features, that kind of stuff. It's kind of like the new STS ADM, if you know if you know what that is. So, back to it. So, what I've got here is a uh, is a command that's going to do both of those things. It's going to get the service application ID and then it's going to pass it to the ranking model. So, I'll just enter that. And I get back a list of the custom, the, the, the custom, sorry, the built-in ranking models and their IDs here. So we can see which one is set to default. You could, of course, change which default one it is. You can do a, a help command on the get SP enterprise uh, search ranking model to see what kind of parameters it can take. Or look at the commandments list and see how to do that. Um, but we can use these without making them default as well. So I think I'd like to take the high proximity ranking model. So I'm just going to take that ID here. Now I've got the ID. If I pass this ID to SharePoint in the search center, I'll be able to see what this ranking model does. So I'll show you my site. I've got this site here. And I'm just going to go to the SharePoint basic search. And I will search for night, simple term that I know exists in here. So. so I've got some results here. Now I want to make these results show me be shown in uh, high proximity. So it's going to put these terms together. Well, maybe I better do a, uh, a two term search because proximity is not going to matter much if it's uh, the terms are not together. So I search for night garden here. Got two terms. Now the first thing you need, you should do is utilize this parameter. And if I can add this parameter in the URL, uh, oh, it's already here for me. Um, so basically, you just type in RM, 
equals, which is the parameter we need, and then the value of our of our ranking model after that. And you can try the different ranking models to see what works. If you make your own custom model after our webinar next time, you can then test out that and tweak it and test it and tweak it and test it until you get the exact kind of ranking that you want. So um, we'll just test this one. We'll pass that value and we'll see now the the results I get back are much different. I've got back some other uh, documents here that I normally didn't see before because the proximity of these terms is higher in there and they were actually given a much higher ranking because more hits of the term terms close together um, appeared. So this may appear better to you in certain circumstances and you can actually apply that. Um, this probably would never use this uh, parameter if, if you don't have to. I mean you could put links to different ranking from different sites by just adding the parameter. That might be something interesting for you. But generally, pro probably what we want to do is we want to permanently change this web part to show this ranking algorithm instead of the rank other ranking algorithm. So I'll show you now how to do that. So to do that, we want to edit this page. We'll go to our result page in the on the search center. So I've got my results here. And I, I want to modify the XSL for this search core results to set that new ranking algorithm as a default ranking algorithm. So the first thing I do is I, I want to export this web part. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the web part and then upload it back as a new web part. So I'll export the web part. And I'll just save it. And I'll open it. So I've got it here. You can see, hopefully. Um, and now we want to find the ranking model uh, value here. So the default ranking model ID value is here, a little bit down, and that's the property name for it. And we can see it's closed without having a property in it. And what we want to do is we want to put our property, which is the ID of our ranking algorithm, into that one. So I will just put a closing tag on this for that property. And then I'll place my ranking ID in there. So now after I save this web part and I upload it again, it's going to be default set to this particular ranking model. So let's say I save this. And then I want to go back to my site and upload this new web part. Now, first of all, we would delete this other web part because you can't have more than two core result web parts with different ranking models on them. You'll get the same rank, whatever the first one is, the, all the rest will take that ranking algorithm. So um, you have to delete the core search results web part that you have on there already and then upload a new one. So after you've deleted that one, we can just click add a web part. And we'll get this uh, dialog at the top of the page. And then we want to upload our web part that we, that we modified there. So you can just browse and find that web part wherever it was that you found it. And it will appear in the web parts list here. And then you can add it to that page or into the page to have it as that web part. And your new ranking algorithm will work in that web part. So that's very good. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today for the ranking algorithm. I'll show you this page again. Uh, this is the command you need to get those custom IDs back. And um, if you want to put the ranking model into the URL, use this. There's some more references here. So uh, please check those out as well. Now, next time in part two, I will look at the XML descriptor for the custom model, uh, how to upload those custom models, which elements are in the custom models, um, how to identify the managed metadata IDs in the uh, in the <coughs> excuse me in SharePoint, <coughs> because you need to have managed metadata to use for the to change the weighting if you're going to rely on a on a managed metadata value or a custom column property in order to add weight and how to apply those to the web parts as well. Please do check out our products on Talica Search and on Talica Preview. We also recently released Antalka Aggregate, which is a cool new product for building dynamic document libraries in SharePoint. 
if you'd like to contact us, my name is Robert Pidock. My colleague Josh Noble, is his uh, contact details are here. If you have any questions about what we discussed today, if you have any additional questions about the products, please do give us a call or write us an email.